Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The text for today's sermon comes from our gospel reading, John chapter 17, and specifically uh, verse 3 where it says, And this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. We live in a world where everybody wants options, choices, and deities, gods with a little g, run rampant. It is nothing new. You look at the Old Testament or in history, they both record uh, people like the Egyptians having the gods that they had. The Bible history tells us of all the idol worship that went on to Baal and other gods uh, throughout the Israelites' Old Testament as well as into the New Testament. You may recall the famous story of John who's in the city and there's all these uh, idols to all these different gods and he finds the one that's dedicated to the unknown God. And he begins, I said John, Paul, sorry. And he begins to explain to those that are in uh, attendance because they are thinkers and they want to know about these things. He explains to them that he knows this unknown God. And he begins to explain it to them. But we understand that there's only one God, the capital G. Three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but only one God. And yet we live in a world where there are all kinds of options, choices to choose from, even in this day and age. Set aside the gods that we put in our own lives, things like power, wealth, prestige, uh, all the things that people want. But there are also these other gods, little g, that exist in the world. And many in Christendom would have us believe that there's more than one way to get to heaven. There are multiple ways, all kinds of ways. Why would a God who has created us in this world only give us one choice? loving God would create options for everybody. Well, there's only one choice, one option. And those who are devout believers in things like Allah, the Muslim community, they will tell you that their God is not the same as ours. You'll hear lots of familiar words, Jesus, Joseph, Isaac, Noah, those who would tell you that Allah is the same as our great God would be wrong. Those who are adamant followers of the Islam religion would tell you that it is wrong as well. There is only one God. Hence, early on, when God delivers the Ten Commandments to his people, the very first one is, you shall have no other gods. None. Absolutely none. There's not an option there. There's no wiggle room. He says he is a jealous God, and he is. He will not share with any other quote-unquote deity. And this is why in this age especially, in the world we live in, it's very important when you communicate with people, dialogue with people, speak with people, and your religion comes up in what you believe, it's not enough to ask somebody, do you believe in God? Because more than likely, they will say yes. But without unpacking it, the God they believe in, more than likely, unless you know them very well, is not the same God you believe in. After 9-11, there was a huge outpouring of um, people wanting to sound and be religious time I was in the St. Louis area and you couldn't throw a rock and not hit a sign at some store that had proclaimed God bless America. Unfortunately, many of those were people of different beliefs, God bless you, and their God was a different God. God bless you. We need to understand, God bless you. Somebody's sneezing like I do, just softer. We need to understand who this God is. And it's not just enough to understand who God is and to know God. There's the Son, Jesus, 
And as we understand from this scripture, everything has been given to Jesus. All the authority that God has has been given to him. And Jesus is still giving God the Father the glory because he is God the Father. And of course, the Spirit's coming. That happens next Sunday. And yet, you have to have Jesus. You can't get to the Father, as it says in other parts of Scripture, without Jesus. So here's what you need to pose to people who tell you, oh, there's lots of ways to heaven. You know, everybody's got it right. Well, if everybody's got it right, then why does the Bible, which is our book, why does the God who claims to be and is the only true God, why does he not tell us there are other options? Why does he not? For the very same reason that if you read the Quran, you will find out that Allah says the very same thing. I am the one true God, there are no others. If you're going to be the ultimate God of the universe, you cannot share. And God doesn't want you to be uh, mistaken. He doesn't want you to misunderstand. He wants to make it clear for you. As he tells Moses, tell them, I am, Yahweh, sent you. That is the name of God, Yahweh. There is no other name for Jesus Christ is our Savior. He carries a long list of titles, but they are titles, they are not names. And of course, you know that uh, the prophecy that's still to be fulfilled is that Jesus will come back one day. And the prophecy says when Jesus comes, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he, Jesus Christ, nobody else is Lord. So as much as it offends some people to think that you, can have multi, you can't have multiple ways to God, it's a truth, it's a fact, it's a God fact. It's not a Lutheran Church in Missouri Synod, it's not a Lutheran, it's not a Pastor Eves, it's a God fact. There is only one. Jesus is praying to God in the very scripture that you heard this morning and asking him, to, or giving him glory to the fact that these people that have been given to him would know the only true God. God's word doesn't mix and mince and it doesn't waver and it does, leave, does not leave any wiggle room. If you're going to believe in God, you have to believe in God. These Christians that claim there's multiple ways to get to heaven are kind of in the same boat as Christians who will make the statement that I believe in creation, but God used evolution to get what he got. I don't think they listen to what they're saying, because to say that God used evolution to create the world is like saying God's not powerful enough, he had to have help. And that's not the God we know. The God we know is all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere. And when he speaks... When he spoke, it was created. And his very essence is spirit. So there is only one God. People who believe otherwise are in for a rude, a very rude awakening come judgment day. There won't be multiple gods sitting around waiting to dish out judgments. There will only be one. Three persons, but one God. And to be honest, who would want multiple gods? Kind of like having multiple wives or spouses, if you will. How would you keep them all happy? How would you keep all of their rules and all of their teachings? How would you do the things they've asked you to do? And they are all different to some degree. Some will be close, but most of them are vastly different. Vastly different. Those who worship Satan will tell you that we've got Satan all wrong. He's just a good guy trying to make sure we do the right thing. That's not true. Satan's a bad guy. The worst. As it says in here, he's like a lion prowling around, a hungry lion, waiting to devour. And Satan would like nothing more than for God-fearing Christians to go, oh, well, it must be okay to have multiple gods. Surely that's okay. God wouldn't want to leave anybody behind. It's true. God has made the statement in his word to us. He would have it, would not have it that any of us would perish separated from him by sin. 
cold, hard fact is that those who do not believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and is their Savior, lived, died, suffered, died, and rose for them, are not going to heaven. It has nothing to do with the sins you do or don't do. If you sin, that doesn't send you to hell. If you don't sin, that doesn't send you to heaven. It's a relationship. And that relationship involves two, you and God. And if it's anybody but Yahweh, the triune God, you're in a bad relationship. Jesus doesn't want this for you. He comes to explain to you all of these things as you read in Scripture and continue to hear over and over again. The world is going to continue to look for loopholes in Christianity. They are going to continue to resist Christianity. Because there are things about Christianity that people just don't like. Because it says, thou shalt not. And people don't like being told, thou shalt not. And so we're getting ready to go into June, halfway through another year. We don't know what the Lord has in store for us. But we do know that God, the one true God, is the one who is our God. And no matter what happens, no matter what comes our way or comes uh, in, down the road, he's in charge. Not sharing that with anybody. Not a, any other deity. So my prayer for you and for the people you interact with is that they would come to realize that all the fabrications and the lies that Satan has planted about all these various gods that will get you to heaven are a lie. And put your focus on the one true God who loves you so much, loves you so much, he sent his only son into the world to die for you so that you can have eternal life. And that is the only way to get to heaven. And it takes understanding who the good shepherd is to hear his voice, to hear the call, and to answer. May you find the peace and the comfort and the joy and the healing, all of the things that only come from Jesus Christ as you walk your journey faith in this world until God calls you home to be in the very presence of the one true God. And it will just be the three persons as far as deities go. There will be no other God. They're all false. Trust in the one true God. He will never lead you astray. He's always there for you. And he loves you. And if you believe, he saves you. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.